Me and the dog, we've been coughing and hacking, really had this sore throat. I've been trying some new remedies. In this video, I'm gonna be showing you five new remedies. Could work for both you and your pets. Hello you guys, welcome back to my channel. For those of you who are new, welcome. Today's video is featuring Tula, <clears throat> maybe the not so willing um, mottled dog, along with myself, the subject with the sore throat. <coughs> mm. So here's the deal. We went away to a conference, going through that whole security thing, you know, we are heading in security, grabbing those trays. Pretty sure I grabbed somebody's tray who wasn't so well. I got there sore throat illness. I ended up trying lozenges, you know, I unfortunately wore a waist, I didn't have access to much. But I did go get myself a few remedies at one of the local natural health stores. They work pretty well, so I'm going to try some of those with myself, along with our non-willing dog Tula. The first thing you guys should all be using um, whether you have a sore throat, your dog, your cat has a sore throat and they're coughing, is unpasteurized honey. So the easiest way to give it is just the honey directly. Um, I'm looking at doses of about a half a teaspoon per 10 pounds of body weight. Tool is about 20 pounds, I'd be giving her a full teaspoon. We're gonna scoop up about a teaspoon. Um, here, Tula, remedy number one, what do you think? Good girl. Hmm. So you could just do that, just give it directly in a spoon. The other option would be to put it in a cup, add a bit of hot water, dilute it that way, you know. Even if you're gonna make sort of a quarter cup of water. And in some cases I'll even add in um, five to 10 drops of lemon juice. Sometimes that seems to make it a little more helpful. With my sore throat, that's the first thing I did. I got some sort of um, raw, local, unpasteurized honey. And I was treating myself with that. And really instantly, you know, within like a few hours after taking it, I started to at least symptomatically feel better. So the next thing you guys can consider is using coconut oil. As far as doses, it's about a half a teaspoon per 10 pounds of body weight. It's about two tea, about one full teaspoon. So we're gonna try that on Tula here. And let's get a teaspoon out. Here it is, Tula. Number two is coconut. Mmm, good girl. Oh, you like it. <gasps> oh, good girl. Coconut oil has an array of different uses. Um, but another, another really simple, easy thing that many, most of you guys are gonna have in your house that you can consider using. Okay, here you go. God, you love coconut oil. Wow. It's also good for your digestion. It's good for your brain health. A great alternate source of energy. Seems to increase metabolism. There are so many different positive benefits coming from coconut oil. What? Oh, you like coconut oil. God. She won't leave me alone. She wants more coconut oil. So the third thing, which Tula won't be so keen on, is this apple cider vinegar. This goes more to trying to treat the underlying cause, because it's not symptomatically going to you know, soothe the throat. But we know it's antibacterial, has some antiviral properties, um, as well as being antifungal. But to get your dog and yourself to consume it, you need to make it taste a little bit better. I mean, as you know, there's that big, sharp, acidic tang to it. With the apple cider vinegar, um, Tula's dose be one teaspoon, one teaspoon for 20 pounds. So here is Bragg's unfiltered raw apple cider vinegar. I really like this brand. Second, and I, there is no endorsements or any, I don't get any money out of it, just like it. Okay, so here's a teaspoon. We'll try a teaspoon of the eight apple cider vinegar. A teaspoon of honey. Mmm, Tula. We'll get you to consume this ACB. Mmm. Okay, our apple cider vinegar honey concoction. See what it tastes like. 
Mm, not bad. Let's see what Tula thinks about it. I don't know. A girl. Oh. Thumbs down from Tula. So that would mean if you're going to be able to give that to your dog. Well, no, there she's drinking it now. Aha. Uh -huh. She got a bit more honey. I was going to say you're going to need to use a syringe. But good girl, there. And as you guys may or may not know, Tula is a little bit particular. She won't just eat everything. Uh, but then the other thing, you may have to be using a syringe if you want to squirt that into your dog. So just have yourself, you know, a 10 or 20 cc syringe. You can squirt that into their mouth and or your cat. Next is this. So we're gonna make some ginger tea with some fresh ginger. I'm gonna make the ginger tea. I'm going to peel a part of a nice fresh ginger root, gratefully given to me by my neighbor, Kathleen. Thank you, Kathleen. I'm gonna cut up about a tablespoon, and a standard amount, about a tablespoon of ginger, and you know, just dice it really finely. Our ginger, a cup of water. We're simmering the ginger for 15 minutes. Here is our ginger tea. You can see it's sort of a yellowish color. Here we go to strain the ginger. I mean, you don't need to, um, especially if you're using it yourself. I bet it. As you, as you know, ginger is really healthy for you, so you don't need to strain the chunks out. A lot easier to give to your dog or your cat, though. For Tula here and myself, I'm going to take two tablespoons of this ginger tea. Squirt that in. You know, so think about about a tablespoon for 10 pounds of body weight. Two tablespoons of yummy ginger, and then I'm going to take about a teaspoon. And make that taste better. A teaspoon of some honey. The moment of truth, will the hound like my ginger honey concoction? Oh, Tula, this is going to be so good for you. What do you think? Oh, oh she had a little bit of it. I don't know if she's keen on the ginger, though. We try it again. Good girl. So here's the honey ginger concoction. Mm. And it tastes pretty good. It's not bad. I mean, you can, you can taste a really strong taste of the ginger, but it's really sort of mellowed out with the, the honey. One study I read, they actually documented, you know, swabbing people that had sore throats, and they actually um, took that swab and they, you know, showed the antibacterial effects of ginger. Um, so that was part of the rationale for using ginger for sore throat. So one is antibacterial, two, it's anti-inflammatory. And the last one is using the herbal tincture licorice, which we have right here. One really interesting thing about using licorice or licorice tincture, there's a couple different studies that I'll link to uh, in the description of the show notes, but that it was actually being used as a gargle or as a, as a, you know, a pre mouthwash prior to people going in for surgery. And what they're finding is symptomatically, it was making a huge difference as far as alleviating the amount of pain they would have post-op. Because often what's happened, you're in anesthesia, you have this thing called an endotracheal tube put down into your trachea, this big airway, as we do when we're doing surgery in our dogs and cats. It can cause a whole lot of pain, a whole lot of throat pain, cause you to cough. People responded really well to just using, you know, this licorice uh, as a, you know, pre-surgical gargle or mouthwash. So one, you could use it directly. You're looking at doses of about a half a mil of the tincture. So you can glasses so I can see it for you. Which takes you right there, a half a mil for 20 pounds. So that's half a mil there. There's two of this dose. And I'm gonna just try it once again. I'm gonna take this half a mil. God, she's gonna get extra honey. 
because it does have alpha alcohol. It's got a bit of a tang to it. I'm gonna try mixing that once again with the boat. Just take a half a teaspoon of some of that honey, Tula, because you seem to respond well to the honey. So I'm just gonna mix the honey, the licorice tincture. Um, you could also add a little bit of water. Run a try just straight like this. Let's see if this encourage it. See what you think of this concoction too. What do you think? Oh, this could be the one that doesn't turn out so positive. Take two. Oh, good girl. I think actually she's more liking the honey on the outside of the spoon. So a couple big points about the licorice. One, it seems to be antibacterial. Two, it's got some anti-inflammatory type properties. So symptomatically, it's just taking away that inflammation. And that's what I also use with myself. I got the honey and then I got some licorice tincture and it seemed to work really well. Um, I definitely found the honey was soothing. It's, a, it's antibacterial. Made a lot easier to take the licorice. And you know, I took that three times a day and pretty confident I bounced back quicker than if I just, you know, done something conventional or just symptomatically, you know, been popping ibuprofen. Thank you guys so much for watching this edition of Veterinary Secrets. I hope you found it somewhat helpful, especially if you or your dog or your cat has a sore throat and they're coughing. If you've yet to do so, I'd love for you to click up there to subscribe. Click down there to like this video. <clears throat> you definitely have to like Tula for being good support for all of it. And, la and lastly, when you click the link further in the box below, I can send you my free book, my free videos on how to heal your pets at home with my top natural remedies. I'm kind of liking actually the ginger honey. Try that in my daughter too. She's got the illness that I've infected her with. <laughs>